Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, this is a series called Chats with Elisa and today we're doing an adulting 101 themed video. Today we're gonna be switching things up and I'm gonna be talking about actually how to apartment hunt and some tips I have with living with roommates. As you guys know, I'm 21, so I feel like a lot of the people who subscribe to my channel are pretty much around that age or maybe college students who are looking to rooming with other people or maybe they're freshly out of college and looking to go apartment hunting and find roommates. Whatever the case is, this video I have compiled a list of 10 tips on my recommendations and suggestions for people who are looking to find roommates and just some things that I wish I knew beforehand. So. I have my notes right over here to keep me on topic. So with that said, let's jump right into this video. All right, so the first tip that I have whenever you are looking for a place, and this goes for regardless if you're looking for an apartment or a house, which I'm definitely not at that stage in my life yet, but I think a good tip to start with is to give yourself enough time and to not feel rushed when you look for an apartment. It may be that you can find an apartment really quickly that you like, but finding the roommates is more of the difficult part or vice versa. Either way, you want to make sure that you give yourself enough time so you can figure out what you like, you can tour different places, and it's always better to find or to have more time rather than not enough because you definitely don't want to be in a position where you're forced to make a decision and you kind of choose something last minute that you're not really set on just because of time constraints. So I would definitely recommend giving yourself enough time so that way you can really feel confident going into whatever type of housing situation you decide. It's important to feel comfortable and to feel happy because you know, you're going to be spending the majority of your time in your apartment besides working or going to school. So it's important to feel at home and to find that sense of peace. All right, my second tip is to have options. Now, just like anything in life, I think more options is good. Now, I want to caution you by saying you don't want to overwhelm yourself with too many options. I think when you have so many options, you can definitely struggle with decision, what is it called, paralysis. I may be totally butchering that term, but there's basically this idea that if you have so many options, you won't be able to make a decision as you're so overwhelmed with what is out there. So I definitely recommend looking though at at least three or four different apartments, condos, whatever you're trying to look for, just so that you have this point of comparison and that way you can really evaluate, okay, what do I like about this place? What do I not like? What are the pros and the cons? And kind of a subtopic for this is when you tour the place, you can definitely take notes. I mean, this doesn't have to be like a long detailed list or anything, but just kind of bullet points of the main characteristics of the apartment. What do you like? What do you not like? Um, do they have assigned parking? Do they not? Um, are Is there an in-unit washer and dryer? Like those are the things that you want to write down because they can impact how your daily life is gonna be and whether or not that's a make or break for your situation. It's easy to forget like, oh, which apartment was this? You know, what did I see on this day? our memories are not very reliable in terms of like our long-term memory so it's important to be aware of what each apartment has to offer and so keeping a note like kind of like on your iphone or wherever is just going to make it a lot easier to make a more informed decision next tip is more about contracts and when you're actually signing your lease you really really want to make sure that you read the fine print i know that they'll give you like a huge stack of papers or nowadays they basically do it electronically, but you wanna make sure that you read every detail, you read every line, anything that seems suspicious to you or doesn't seem right or that you want more clarification on, you wanna make sure you have the opportunity to ask the leasing office about the questions that you have. And that kind of goes back to my first point of giving yourself enough time because if you feel rushed and you're really adamant on finding a place, 
and then you're put in a situation where you need to find something ASAP, chances are you may not read everything as thoroughly because you're so rushed about trying to like finalize a place. And I didn't add this on my notes, but I was just kind of thinking about it that location is also really important, I think. I think sometimes we focus so much on the apartment and like the interior of it and how it looks and all of the amenities that it offers, but we can sometimes disregard like the actual location. So for example, <clears throat> like if you're going to a university, you're obviously gonna want something that is close to campus. But besides that, you know, are there grocery stores around? What is the social life? Um, <clears throat> around the area like are there different things to do if that's something important to you like if you're a very social person and you like to go out to town like on weekends right like are there uh, places where you can go and do that or do you have to like drive super far away in order to get to that social night life scene so those are like other things as well that I would say could influence your decision depending on how important that is to you it just really depends on your lifestyle and your priorities <clears throat> sorry you guys I am gonna be drinking some water because girl is having trouble speaking all right so the next tip that i have is more so when you actually move into your place and you sign uh, on the contract and that is to take lots of videos and pics when you first move in so i'm talking about before you have all your boxes in before you actually furnish the place i really really recommend taking an empty tour of your apartment and there's a few reasons why i recommend doing this because we're actually in a situation right now where we're searching for a roommate and we have two people that are really <clears throat> interested in the other room that we're renting out or that we're trying to find a replacement for and I was looking through my phone and I found empty apartment tours and I found videos and photos that I took of our apartment when it was completely unfurnished before any of um, our stuff was in there and it came so handy because when people ask like what does your apartment look like can I get an idea of what the common living area looks like I was able to send those photos so this tip in particular applies to when for example you're in our situation and you want to renew a lease but you're looking for roommates to join you on your lease that's really really handy also too if you are in a situation where you sign a lease and for whatever reason like an emergency happens and you need to find a replacement to take over it makes it <clears throat> really easy to find um, pictures and reference photos to send to people so that way you just have it and I recommend just archiving those photos maybe like in a separate folder on your photos um, galleries the other tip that I have is to actually tour and visit prospective places. This goes as well for actually meeting up and talking to prospective roommates. This may seem like an obvious one, but I think during the pandemic, there was a lot of virtual tours. I mean, we're still in the pandemic, but I would say at the height of 2020, when we were in lockdown, there weren't a lot of like physical tours, but now that things are opening up, I would definitely say take advantage, definitely visit the place. Do not take someone's word for it. Like if you have a roommate or a partner, whoever, <clears throat> who is touring the place and they say it's great and you take their word for it, I think that is not the best idea because one, you guys could have totally different opinions of what is nice and what is acceptable. So definitely see the place for yourself if you can. Now, if you're in a situation where the place that you're looking into is in a different country or in a different state and it's just not viable for you to actually visit the place, I would say the next best <clears throat> option is to have someone take a video of the place, kind of back to my last tip. That way you can actually see it because let me tell you, photos can be very deceiving and it's really easy to make a place look really big or to make a place look a lot nicer than it actually is um, in photos just based on the angles and photo editing and I don't see this a lot but it is just something to be aware of that when I was compiling my list of tips I wanted to put that down as to actually visit and tour the place because like I said, you want to make sure that you feel comfortable and you want to make sure you feel at home in your new place. 
the last thing you want is to sign the lease and realize that you are totally not happy with your living situation um, it's just a horrible situation to be in and I think it's very preventable if you give yourself enough time and make sure that you are very really thorough with your research. I would say to be cautious with rooming with friends. Now, this is kind of like either it can go really great or it can go the totally opposite way. Make sure that even though you guys are best friends, even though you guys get along great, um, make sure that you actually talk about your living compatibility. So for example, is your best friend a really messy person? Are they a really clean person? Does that matter to you? Um, do they get up really early in the morning and are you more of a night owl? Like those are things that you want to communicate when you are finding roommates because come to think of it, that affects your day-to-day -day life and it can just create issues down the line if you're not clear on your priorities and you're not clear on like what are the house chores or what is what are the expectations on the other roommate one thing too that i find was really helpful our second time around when we looked for roommates is we scheduled a video call just to kind of get to know each other and then if it's possible you can also schedule like a social hangout like go out for dinner or go get coffee it doesn't have to be anything major and you don't have to do something Thing, like a dedicated day to visit your roommates or p potential roommates but I find that making time to socialize with your roommates in a, in a different setting rather than just this like phone call of like hey I'm looking for a place to rent and I think that we could get roommates like I feel like if you expand your opportunity to get to know them in like a setting that's not specifically meant to find a roommate you can get to know them better i think when you are moving in and you have roommates it's important to have a conversation about what you guys already have because it can really save you on trying to buy unnecessary things it can save the hassle of you know going out and buying like a new couch let's say your roommates already have a couch from a previous place you guys can just use that so talk about what you have talk about also like what are what's going to be shared for example like if you have a coffee machine right like is that coffee machine going to be something that everyone can use or is that just for you um you also want to talk about like for storage and the fridge like how are you gonna divide up the space so that way everyone has like an equal amount of storage to put their stuff in. These are little things that you don't necessarily think about when you sign the lease, but over time when you have gone through multiple roommates, it's things that you become better at deciding like what is the best way to, to divide up the space and how everyone can feel happy and just not feeling like you're stepping on anyone's toes. And finally, my last tip is to establish communication. If something bothers you about your roommate, for example, like if they leave things out that you are not comfortable with or you're like, hey, you know, they're a little bit messy, like it's totally okay to call them out respectfully, of course, and to be like, hey, you know, um, would you be okay if you put this away? And it doesn't have to be like this big thing. Like you could even create just a group chat and text your group about when you notice certain things. Um, In-person communication is always better, I think, if you if there's like a more serious major issue that's going on because what I find is that sending it through text, it can be really miscommunicated and you don't really hear the tone of the other person. So you could feel like you're attacking that other person. It's good to have that working communication so that everyone feels comfortable. All right guys, so those were the 10 tips I have for apartment hunting and finding and living with roommates. I hope this video was helpful for any of you out there who are looking to find an apartment or in the process of looking for new roommates. I know that it can be overwhelming at times, but it does get easier with time when you go through multiple experiences with having roommates just like anything else. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If if you did give it a thumbs up subscribe down below and with that said I will catch you guys in the next video bye